welcome back to another video with myself and me <laughs> and today I'm starting something totally new totally different that I've decided to go with and it's called regret rating as I'm sure you've seen in the title already and this is gonna be how much I regret buying this game kind of scale and I'll show you the scale in a minute but what I want to do is introduce this to you guys first and yeah it's basically how much money did I spend on it there's a few factors to consider here that I've written down that I've totally lost now so here we go this is my first test of regret rating video for you guys so value for money very low upfront cost so about 10 to 20 dollars or pounds or euros in that range. It's free to play. No subscription required to play this game. You can get a subscription that gives you loads of benefits so you can play the expansions without having to pay for them. You can, well you are kind of paying for them, but you can get an unlimited crafting bag space. Here we go, craft bag. Unlimited amounts of junk you can put in here. As you can see it's quite long. So that's another benefit of that. You also get crowns every month. You get 1500 crowns to spend in the shop so if something new comes out and you really want it and you've built up crowns for example this outfit I really want this outfit I can buy it now because I've got an ESO plus membership you can buy crowns individually as well but the membership pretty much gives you the same amount and you've got all these extra benefits so it's worth doing then it's not pay to win though even though it has the subscription and the shop and the option of free to pay there is free to play sorry there is no pay to win feature in this game as such it's mostly crown crates, which is just mounts and outfits. Um, downloadable co content stuff, that's fine. That's just DLCs. Upgrades, so that's not really an upgrade. You get a, a pet thing. You can play any race, any alliance, so you don't have to like be bound to your alliance based on what race you choose. Imperial edition upgrades, so you get your horse in your imperial, ra imperial race. That's like kind of like a DLC again. There's nothing really like that bad in here that would be like oh my god I totally can't compete with people now because I can't pay for the game it's not like that at all it's like changes of your name and stuff there's this weird stuff here like curse of the vampire werewolf spike but it also brings a lot of debuffs as well with those and you can get it off other people you can also get the werewolf by in game somewhere like midnight or the, it was a vampire I can't remember but you can get like bit by the vampires or the things at midnight and you can get the disease anyway so that's not a pay to win feature at all um you've got respects you've got supplies so what's this some food and some pots it's not a big deal you can get food and pots in game this is not going to make a huge difference to you soul gems you can get this off bosses so if you're just being a bit lazy you want to get some soul gems you're not going to be like oh yeah i've just got all of these i'm going to be way better now than anyone else repair kits again you can just repair the npc uh, restoration potions again they are good but it's not gonna be like the biggest difference you've ever seen in your life for that kind of thing so that is the DLC section pay to win thing um, DLCs there are DLCs but they're not required to play the game the game itself the base game is massive you have access to all of these areas with the base game value for money is high with Elder Scrolls this is what I like okay quality so certain movement bugs the movement on your character is not that fluid as some games are like when you hit A and D when you're moving or side to side on a controller I'm not sure if you're moving forward and you hit your side to side controllers it's not it's a bit weird and when you go backwards you just turn around you just turn around your character faces you it's not like you're actually walking backwards or anything so it's not as smooth as something like world of warcraft where their movement is quite like on point pretty solid uh the other movement bugs that i have found in quality wise when you jump up stuff sometimes you get stuck and slide down for 10 million years on a cliff i'm trying to replicate it now but i can't actually do it very easily but sometimes I'll try it. Maybe they fixed it now, I'm not sure. If you're trying to get up a cliff or something and you jump up it, you'll get stuck on that cliff and then you end up sliding down like really slowly for ages. And I don't know why that happens. And it's not happening recently. Maybe they fixed it now, so that's good. All right, and then I've ended up charging through cave walls. When you've got this skill here, critical rush or charge, or whatever it's called, and you charge things with it. I was in a cave once. <laughs> I was in a cave and the mob was in the floor down the bottom of the cave because the cave went downwards into a hole. I did that and I ended up flying through the roof of the cave and I was on top of the map. Third person camera is a bit glitchy when you jump up stuff like this. 
they haven't fixed that yet. I don't know what that's about, but here we go. If I go first person, no problems. So that's something they haven't really adjusted yet. As you can see, it's kind of a bit glitchy there. So quality isn't the highest in that regard, but, but the thing is here for quality, check out this sword though. That is pretty, uh, pretty good quality. Check out those northern lights there. All of this stuff. So graphics quality is like through the roof, to be honest. If you've got high settings, really, really good graphics quality, it's definitely worth it. Like this is amazing to me anyway. Everything is very smooth looking, very clear, very high quality, very nice. So some of the movement is a bit buggy, but the rest of the game quality is quite high. So when you do quests and stuff, all the NPCs have their own voice actors and it covers it all. So you've got very, a lot of work has gone into this and you can tell. Moving on to features. So customization, you've got both skills and character customization. Check out how many skills you've got. This is your class skill. You've got three different sections for your class skills. Each of those have like five or six different skills. Plus you've got passive abilities. So that there's already 15 different skills you can use. You can't physically use that many skills already on your bar. Um, and then you've got, again, weapon skills. Each one of them has five skills in it. So that's another, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's another 30 skills you can use as a weapon skill alone. Plus you've got ultimate abilities. Plus you've got armor passives and armor skills as well. So whole lot of features, a ridiculous amount of features. Character customization, you've got that as well. You've also got lots of outfits, you've got lots of hairstyles that they're bringing out recently and hats and things, so that kind of stuff is good. You've got lots of customization there. I would only say in character customization there isn't really that much you can do with your character. You can change it to look quite nice. Uh, most of them, apart from some of them. Yeah, you'll see what I mean. But uh, you can change the character to look how you want it to, but it won't have as many features. Like, you can make them fat and everything, that's good, and or really skinny. But you can't, uh, it doesn't adjust that much. It's not such a dramatic adjustment for the face and stuff. So they kind of do look similar. It's within the race, I would say. So it's not going to be like you can make a Bosmer this wood elf look like a nord it's not going to be like that but you can make them look a bit different um pros here you can collect extra skill points through sky shards it's very open world this game you can go anywhere you feel like you can start anywhere you want to even if you start as a, a lowly wood elf like me and then you can just teleport to the main starting area for like the nord but now with one time real after they've released their update everything scales to your level so you can literally go anywhere you want to anywhere you feel like to go questing Obviously you'll have to kind of walk to certain places because you only get the initial teleport to the starting town. Uh, but other than that you can pretty much just hop in, go anywhere you want to and everything will be level 1 if you want to. Because that's your level, or 3, sorry, you start at level 3. And that's another really good point to see. Um, very free in that regard. You can quest with anyone you want to with any level you want to for the most part. Except for end game content, that's the only thing. And then, so it's really good for new and old players, so if someone wants to bring along their friends to Elder Scrolls and they're totally new to it, then they can do that. And they can play with them straight away, they don't have to wait for them to level. Uh, the only kind, there is a massive war PvP combat thing. And plenty of endgame content, blocking and dodging, etc. So the mechanics of the game are quite different. So you can block things that come in. So it's quite interactive gameplay. I like that. And hit things like that. You can also do heavy attacks, which regenerate stuff. You've got bow skills again, like that. You can block, all that sort of stuff, all that good stuff. You can dodge, which is good, like that, and backwards and forwards and all that stuff. Obviously that uses energy, but it is quite cool in that way. And the only type of PvP there is, this is where I'm moving into the con section. <laughs> the only type of PvP there is really in the game, there is no world PvP that you're just like out and about questing and you can kill other people. There's no such thing like that. Only in this map here, which is Cyrodiil, that's the only PvP you can get. Uh, and it's just massive war type style, like 20 on 20, 40 on 40 PvP. And the only place that you can actually go for more one-on-one -on -one stuff is Imperial City, for which you need the downloadable content for that. So that's kind of the downside there. 
You might run into people in a cave or something in Cyrodiil and be able to kill them, but that's uh, an off chance. The other cons here is a confusing class system with skill morphs that can make builds that can make builds really hard to follow because they'll use different names for skills. So these would all have different names previously because I've already morphed them up to the higher level version of it. So it's kind of difficult to understand. You can kind of work it out from the picture because the pictures are similar. Had a look at Nightblade the other day, could not work it out for my life. The other thing is navigation system is totally different to other MMOs. So what is this? What is that thing? God knows what that is. Like some kind of weird table. I don't know. It's just like you've got to get used to it. If you've played Skyrim and stuff like that, it probably won't be an issue. But navigation is a bit hard to follow in the beginning. Oh, you've also got stealth. That's a positive. Anyone can stealth like this. It just uses your stamina up. So that's pretty cool. You can sneak around. You're just a bit slow. And this does actually make you invisible to the other faction when you're in the PvP zone. So it is good to use. And the other thing that's slightly annoying for people that you might find. You know how you got your skill bar normally? Here it is. You've got a skill bar. <laughs> this one only has five and then you've got to switch to a different weapon to use the rest of your five. So although this is cool as a feature, it kind of limits you to how many skills you can use and how good they will be. So that's something to consider. And you have to swap weapons all the time, which is slightly annoying if you're a healer or something. And you've got to like swap to your other bar to get your heal out. And then you get confused where you put it. So the other thing is friends. Friends, very friendly, this game is. You can join in, like I said, and just start questing with a high level character. It doesn't matter. Uh, everything scales. You've got lots of alternatives to questing, like world bosses and dolmens. So you'll find out what that is. But it's basically... A giant chain teleportal thing that comes out of the sky. I would say it's similar to Rift. Mobs come out of there, you kill them, you defeat the anchor, and you disanchor the thing from our worlds of Tamriel, and then you get a loot box at the end. And there is an end boss as well, so that kind of thing. That's always fun to do, and you get experience from it. Then, can you run it on your computer is the final thing. Yes, you can, but it depends what computer you've got. So, my computer right now is stupidly strong and powerful and everything it's just a bit crazy putting the specs up now here so you can see you will have to invest a bit of money to make the game looking like this also a high refresh rate monitor will solve your lag issues of frames because I've had some trouble there and it just does seem like there's just a bit of bad code around in game and it just struggles to run at high frames per second so if you get yourself a high refresh rate monitor you should be able to see it a little bit clearer a little bit nicer in that regard so the other thing that i wanted to go over i'm trying to work out it gets my little thingy here there it is right settings so video settings right now on 2560 by 1440 that's fine v-sync is on and aliasing whatever that does is on uh gamma you know that kind of stuff scaling no nothing there all this is high which is the highest high ultra medium so water reflection is a bit funny i haven't been able to work out but it seems like medium is a sweet spot for that so it looks good but it's not too weird and like flickery it goes flickery sometimes maximum particle density i've got on 1024 i haven't really increased that or bothered to do it i'm not sure why yet but that's just where it's been this whole time suppression distance maxed out view distance maxed out ambient occlusion yes bloom yes depth of field off with it on it just looks a bit like blurred so the stuff in the background looks blurry like kind of like a camera with you focusing on something nearby and then the rest of it's blurry so I turn that off so I can actually see stuff in clear view far away it just makes it a bit nicer for me and then <laughs> what I've got distortion so certain objects in the world display distortion effects in their vicinity disabling this may improve performance that's on sunlight rays are on grass is on so all that stuff is high quality right now and the game looks really really good and shiny and new and the water looks beautiful so there we go now let's change it to I'll change it to high and see what it does hold on all right here are the settings on high for Elder Scrolls you can see my frames have increased by quite a bit there they've put on depth of field again oh you can see a dolmen there in the distance that's that weird portal thing there and high settings still looking good still looking nice wouldn't complain about that at all so let's have a look at the next one so let's get a medium next all right here we have it we're on medium settings now and you can see some of the shine off the floor has dissipated looks a bit blander 
the water still looks good but it's not as reflective so it's just like a bit more jaggedy water which is fine it still looks fine I would be happy with that frames are still about the same as they were on high I don't know if that's just my computer max them out at 100 I don't really know what the max frames are I don't think there's a setting for that but anyway so frames are maxed out very smooth here now and it's just the ground isn't as shiny it's a bit more uh, like hard looking I don't know and the water is a bit clearer clearer and just not very shiny so it's a bit uh, duller watercolors here so there we go mainly got rid of some of the shine in game and obviously shadows and stuff so it has brightened it up a little bit in that way funnily enough so let's go to low next okay low settings here we go uh, water is totally dark now floor is totally not shiny anymore stuff loads only when I'm close to it so you don't see very much afar if that makes sense but the actual game itself still looks pretty good like pretty nice uh, it is a little bit potato when I go close to my characters you can see here it looks a bit uh, it looks a bit blurry kind of if you had to say the game generally looks a little bit blurrier than it did before so there we go that's the settings quality there minimum system requirements for this I will put up as what do they what does Elder Scrolls suggest what does Bethesda suggest you should be playing this game at and I'm just gonna change my settings back but I'll do that in a bit because it does take forever here we go this is the lowest quality you'll have a good time on this on your PC still frames are 100 I don't I think that's just the max frames for this game right now but it'll be fine like I'm pretty sure you'll be able to run it but the quality might not be that great to look at in that case if you've got a console you can play this game on a console which is really really cool so PS4 Xbox both have this game the only downside is you can't play with your friends if they're playing on PC or something like that and you're on a PS4 or you can't play with Xbox player on a PS4 so that's my video of going over Elder Scrolls as a whole game a lot of effort has been put into making this game is mainly what I can say the quests are very story mode based unfortunately so if you were looking for like something like World of Warcraft you could just hop into and just start like smashing stuff out and doing things straight away you won't have that same experience you will need to spend a lot of time on this game you will need to go through all the NPCs and if you want a quest anyway and see all the dialogues everything's voice acted though so that's really cool if you want to just chill out in a story for a while and like live in the game this is the game for you but if you wanted to just quest as fast as possible to level then you'll probably need to grind instead because that will be the fastest way to level so it's just that kind of game uh, and my regret rating for this game now here's the moment of truth it is a negative three and I will say why because it is a great game it does have a lot of downsides as a great game it doesn't have the same kind of hook that you get with other MMOs like you will start playing them and you'll be like, oh my god I really need to level I really need to do this I'm, I'm really excited to do this to you know to level to get to my friends and like to start doing the extra stuff at the end of the game you don't get the same feeling with this game you're just kind of like oh well I'll just go ahead and play on that for a while now you know just like explore some bits and do some things it's not like there's no pressure on this game at all to level or to do anything really so you can just get away with not playing it for a couple of days and not feel upset that you haven't played it like for me with World of Warcraft if I haven't played it for a couple of days I'll just feel kind of like stressed out because I'll be like oh I haven't been playing this I need to level more I need to get more like stuff done so it's not it's not like that at all it's a very confusing game to get into if you've never played this before speaking from experience crafting totally different navigation totally different skills totally different so it's really hard to get used to I can usually jump into MMOs uh, and get a hang of them pretty quickly but this one took me quite a lot longer and yeah the whole open world thing is really good so that's why it gets a high score graphics are really really good so that's another high score but you do need a stupidly beastly computer to run the graphics at full settings at high frames per second and even in certain areas you'll get memory leaks so the graphics will get really bad frames you'll just have certain areas that have bad code in them and it just won't run as high which they haven't fixed yet either so in that regard that's why it gets a negative three 
it is a good game it is really good but it has lots of downsides as well and it's not for everyone so that is my regret rating for Elder Scrolls it is definitely massive value for money if you want to just spend loads of time in a f in a game with friends that's the other thing you really want friends in this game because if you try to do stuff solo you're probably not gonna have as much fun there are other games that are way more fun doing solo stuff than Elder Scrolls so that's another factor to consider other than that Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got to stick around to watch the whole video. I hope it didn't bore you too much. But if you did like this video, give it a big thumbs up. I want to know the feedback on this because I'm going to start doing this for other games and hopefully start getting these rolling, hopefully providing useful information to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Please like this video and subscribe for more because I will be doing more of these. I'm just not sure the time frame on them. But I will be doing many different games on many different consoles, PC, single player, multiplayer, MMOs, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned, we'll be doing more of them. And thanks for making my game look like potato again. It's nice to, uh, nice to see the low quality, nice to see how I used to play it. But anyway, we'll see you again next time. Bye.